you do a bit of an inspection at the end of the day. Cover the important parts such as engine and leakings at the end of the day. So I'm going to begin here at the door because this is where I usually start my day and where I'll end my day. And I'll begin by putting my gear into the cab. All right. Don't leave this door swinging open. You can hit your head on it. Either latch it back or close the doors. Don't leave greater doors swinging in the breeze, please. Now, while I'm here, and I know I'm going to get in this grater eventually, I'm going to check out the step here. As Ernest will talk about later, this is where most of the accidents happen, and I'll let him talk about that. But you want to check your entry steps. You don't want them falling apart as you're getting in the grater. So I'll check this out now. On this particular manufacturer, the transmission is here, and there's a sight glass to check the fluids in it. So I'll check the fluids here. Now while I'm in this machine, I'm going to go into this articulation hinge area. This is an area where you get a lot of debris, sticks and stones caught in there from the day, if you, whatever type of work you're doing. Now I usually carry a stick and I'll keep it on the grater somewhere. Use that to reach in here and knock the stones out. You don't want a stone falling out on a travel to asphalt surface for some car to pick it up with their tire, whack into another car and in the worst scenario smash the windscreen and that car goes off the road. So you want to make, take care of the traveling public. Clean it off in the articulation area. While I'm here, I'm going to check for fluid leakage around the brake housing. Check the inside of the tires for cuts and scrapes. Check the radial side of the tires. Here you're going to be checking for nails, screws and whatnot, and cuts in the tires. And you're going to check the outer side wall of the tire. Now, having cuts in the radial portion of the tire isn't so critical as having cuts and slashes in the outside portion of the tire. If you have deep cuts in here, you're going to have to look at it and consider replacing that tire. Next, I'm going to move to these bolts here, the mounting bolts for the tire. Mounting bolts can only be checked with a torque wrench, proper torque. And we don't carry the torque wrench around with us, do we? So what you're going to look for here is rust bleed. If you have rust bleed, more than likely that bolt is loose. That's when you're going to want to go and get the torque wrench and check it out. As you've seen in the video about the tire pressures, tire pressures can only truly be checked with a tire pressure gauge. Okay, and tire pressures are important to the performance of the machine. And perhaps Marv will talk a little later about tires and tire pressures. You want to check the outside condition of the rim. This is a one-piece rim. It's very easy to see damage to this rim. A little more difficult on a three-piece rim. Those you'd have to pay a little more attention to to notice damage to the rim. This particular manufacturer has a sight glass to check the tandem chain case oil level. Other manufacturers may not have it, but there is a place to check it on their machines as well. So I check this here. Next, I, what I come to is my battery box. Open up the case. What you're going to do here is you're going to physically grab these components, these batteries, and you're going to check to see that they are secure in there. As you know, graders do a lot of bouncing and shaking during the day. The same with the cables. Physically grab on them and see that they're tightened down. When you open up an access panel or an access door, close it as you leave it. That way you won't make any mistakes. Now I'm at the engine compartment. Open up the door. In this engine area, of course, you've got your oil level check for the engine. That's the most important thing you're coming here for. But now that you're here, look at your muffler mounts. Here and on the front part of the grader, you want to look for shiny metal. Anything that happens to be shiny is probably going to fail. There's a crack or something's rubbing or chafing, and it'll eventually fail. So take a good look in here for shiny metal. Another thing you're going to want to look for is the exhaust leakage, some black soot. 
physically grab the components and make sure everything's tight in here. Take a good look around, look on the inside for oil, leakage. Everything is fine in here. I see my coolant level up there. I've already looked in the manual. I know the proper level so I can look at it and see that it's fine. I see some decals here. These warning decals or decals that are on the machine, every one of them has an explanation to them. Okay, these are not language barriered. They are symbols and they're explained in the operator's manual, what each one of them mean. And they're placed all around the machine, pinch points, hot surfaces, what not. Read the operator's manual. Now I'm going to step back from the machine and I'm going to scan up the back of this side of the cab. I'm looking at the condition of the glass, I'm looking at the condition of the lighting, and I'm looking at my wipers. If glass is dirty, and especially on the rear window, in low sunlight, if you've got a dust film on there, sometimes it can be just like a sunshade. It'll blind you and you can't see anything out of the rear. Next, I'll move my eyes along the outflow of the grater to the rear. I'm going to look at my air intake and my exhaust pipe. If something doesn't look right there, come around and physically go up on the machine and grab those components and give them a good shake. You don't want stuff falling off of the grater. And we're going to talk about three-point mount dismount, and it's the same thing when you're getting up onto the grader. Three point mount and dismount. You've got foot rest and you've got handles. Doesn't matter where you go, in the cab or anywhere else on the grader, three point mount, three point contact. When I come to the back of the tandem case here, of course I'm going to do the same thing with the tire, as I already explained on the front, and I'm going to look for debris and knock it off the tandem chain case. Look at this brake housing for fluid leakage. Come around to the rear. What I'm going to look at here is lighting condition and your slow moving vehicle sign. Red fades quicker than any other color. If these signs are faded, they're ineffective. Replace them, they're not expensive. Look at the lighting condition. You, on this grader you can open up the hood here and you can check out the condition of the cooling cores and that's more likely leakage and debris on the cooling cores. Okay. Over here I've got ground fueling with the fuel cap. Check to make sure that the cap is tight. You don't want the cap coming off and fuel spilling all over the ground. Close and latch things as you've used them. Next, take a look underneath the grater. Here you're looking for signs of fluid leakage. Hopefully the night before you've placed it on level dry ground. That way you can detect anything that's leaked off overnight. If you see something, of course, you're going to have to investigate where it came from. If you're using your ripper or any other attachments, check the condition of the teeth. Check the condition of the shanks. Make sure all the mounting hardware is on there correctly. And here's a tip for you fellas that have attachments on your graders. This is something for you to get used to. The beginning of the shift, when you start to move the grader, lift your attachments first, your ball board next. At the end of the day, put your attachments down first, your mold board next. If you get into that habit, you won't find yourself running quarter mile down the road with the ripper dragging into the ground. Oh, it's happened? <laughs> okay, so it's just a good habit. Lift your attachments first, then lower them first. You move around to this side of the grater. Now my eyes are going to follow back up the outline of the grater to the back of the cab on this side. Again, you're just checking the lighting, perhaps looking at the wiring mounts if you can see them. You do the same procedure as you did on the left-hand side of checking the tires, 
cleaning debris. In your toolbox, depending on what jurisdiction you're in, you may be required to carry spill kits with you or fire extinguishers. You should check them out. Some of those items are dated and you have to replace or recharge things certain dates. So you can check that out in your toolbox. Open up this engine area on this grater. Here's the turbocharger. Very important area of the engine. Here you're especially going to want to look for exhaust leakage. Okay, the alternator is over here. Physically reach in and grab. We're, grab the alternator, grab the belts, grab your turbocharger, just pull on anything, make sure the starter wires are on there correctly, and just generally look through the area, peer in there, you're looking for fluid leakage. Everything looks good in here now. Close your access door. And now I'll move to the front of the tandem chain case. Here's this side of the articulation hinge. Again, debris, fluid leakage at the brake housing, tire condition, mounting hardware. On this particular manufacturer, here's my brake reservoir. I've already read the manual. I know where the proper level is. I can glance at it. If it's covered in dust, of course, have a rag with you to clean it off so you can see the proper level. Now I'll step back and I'm going to look up this side of the cab. Again, glass condition and importantly, mirrors, mirror condition. Then I'll come down to the steps. Grab onto your steps, make sure they're secure. Move to the front of the grader, scan up this side of the cab. Wipers, lighting, glass condition again. Now I'll begin to follow the outline of the grader from the arch down to the front. The arch area and where the blade lift cylinders are are most prone to cracking on graders. And the reason being is the grader is nothing more than a lever, a two by four with a brick. That's a grader. Let's take the brick away, let's put in a blade. Now let's throw an engine and a couple of wheels on the back. Now let's go. What do you think is going to happen? A blade in the ground, an engine on the back, starts to squeeze and up comes your frame. That's why this area is more prone to cracking. So pay attention to cracks in this area. Now we can come down to the mullboard circle drawbar area. You want to look at all your ball mounts. If any of them are loosed, these are shimmable. Get a hold of the mechanic. Come down to the back of the mold board, and here you're going to want to look at the back of your cutting edge and the mounting hardware for the cutting edges. Cutting edges provide strength to the mold board. If the cutting edge gets down to about a half an inch from the bottom of the board, it's time to change them, they've lost the strength that they provide. Plus, you probably won't get through your workday. So if you think that you won't get through your workday, change the edges before you go out. We've got bearing material for the blade slide, and we've got bearing material in the circle area. Check out the bearing material. The way to check the bearing material for blade slide is to put the blade on the ground and physically move it up and down a bit. If you detect that there's too much play in it, come out, take a second good look at the bearing material, perhaps they need to be changed. I've seen many mold boards ruined from not 